now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. We'll spend the next hour in Pine Ridge, Arkansas. And thanks to Ted at RadioMemories.com for supplying us these newly restored episodes of Lum and Abner. This first episode goes back to December 5th, 1948. Uh, Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. Ha. Frigidaire presents the new Lum and Abner show. Tonight, Frigidaire, a division of General Motors, brings you a brand new kind of visit with those old characters down in Pine Ridge. Featuring Clarence Hartzell as Ben Withers, the music of Felix Mills, and starring your old favorites, Lum and Abner. As we look on the little community of Pine Ridge today, we find Lum in the Jotham Don store. Abner is just entering with the big news of the day. Listen. Hey, Lum! Hey, Lum! Lum! Uh, Charlie Redfield's in the hospital, and we ought to go into the county seat and visit him. Charlie Redfield? What in the world's wrong with him? Nearsightedness. <laughs> Granny? <laughs> that don't put a feller in the hospital. Well, it does when you're so nearsighted that you slip up to your wife at a dance, squeeze her hand, and say, Hello, cutie. Let's me and you sneak out for a ride while my old lady ain't looking. <laughs> oh, my. my goodness, did Charlie do that? Yeah. Last night, they say he's still subconscious. <laughs> you mean unconscious. Subconscious is your other mind. Yeah, well, they say Charlie... Huh? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, huh, what'd you say about my other mind? Well, your subconscious is what makes you dream at night. Oh. See, while you're sleeping, it sets up there wide awake. Sets up where? <laughs> up in your brain. Sets up all night, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Must get awful tar. <laughs> no, it, it sort of stands guard. For incidence, it might hear a strange noise, and it'll say... Reckon what this is. Maybe I better wake old Abner up. Might be a robber. Well, <laughs> he's pretty smart, ain't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. We ought to go and see Charlie. Maybe we could get Ben Withers to drive us in. <laughs> imagine me with two mine. <laughs> yeah, it's hard enough to imagine you with one. Uh, what did you say his name was? Subconscious? Yeah. I believe I'll just phone Ben right now. Wish he had a better name in subconscious. Harvey, Oda, Chester. Hey, how's that, Chester? Oh, call him anything you like. Yeah, Chester. Yeah. Hello, Ben, this is Lum Eddard. Chester, you ought to get more rest. Oh, tolerably. <laughs> Say, Ben, how's chances for you taking me and Abner into the county seat today? You've been staying up at night too much. Well, we want to visit Charlie Redfield at the hospital. Don't worry about me, Abner. I'll get plenty of sleep. No, you don't, Chester. Yes, I do. I'm all right. Uh, Abner, <laughs> will you hash that up? I can't hear a word Ben's saying. Now, what was that again, Ben? Now, you listen to me, Chester. I'm running us. No, you ain't neither. Yes, I am, too. Ben, you oh, shut to up. talk now, louder. Chester, you I watch how you talk thing. to me. I'll pop you on. Go now, ahead, try to think you can. I dog as I will. Wait, Take wait that. Wait just a minute. And that. And that. And that. And that. Sakes, Ben, what are you hitting yourself on the back of the head for? I'm fighting that smart aleck Chester. <laughs> Cut it out. Now, which one of you started this, Rukas? I was minding my own business. Wait a minute. What's the matter with me asking such a question? Go ahead, Ben. Well, wait. Let me tell you how it started. Chester was sitting up there on his little chair. And, well, I guess he's sitting on a chair any long. Well, it's your brain. Furnish it any way you want to. <laughs> little chair. Yeah. 
Now, what'd you say, Ben? Chester, I'm going to the county seat and you can't go. Well, fine, Ben. How soon? If you go, Abner, I'm going to. No, you ain't, you little varmint. Don't you call me a little Abner, varmint now. That up. I'll call you anything uh, I want see to. See you I'm later, boss, Ben. You ain't no such a thing. I am, too. I'm the boss here. <laughs> Dad, blame you, Chester. Now you give me the hiccup. <laughs> well, no wonder the way you've been carrying on. <laughs> Ben's going to be here in a few minutes to take us to the county seat. <laughs> Try to pull yourself together. Oh, my goodness, you hear that, Lum? Huh? Now Chester's got him, too. <laughs> Hi, Granny's Ben. Can't you think of some other way to get shut of Abner's hiccups? We're my night at the county seat, and I hate to take him into the hospital sounding that away. Well, there's one thing we haven't tried. It's a little drastic, so I hesitate to suggest it. Stop the car, Ben. I'm willing to try anything. Well, I dog as maybe I ain't. Now, what's your plan, Ben? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Well, this method was tried on Emory Zinkafus of Mount Ida in November. In oh. November of 38. On who? <coughs> yes. Or no, must have been in October. His funeral was in November. Huh? <coughs> Fine. <coughs> the basis of this theory is physical exertion. What we did with Emery was tie him to the back of the Zinkafus sedan and drive slowly down the road. Well, we've tried everything else. Come on, Abner. Get out of the car. I believe I'll set this one out. <laughs> Hurry up, Abner. Here's an old tow rope we can use, Lum. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Here, Abner, let me tie this rope around your neck, and Ben, you tie the other end on the back bump. <coughs> Well, um, I, I think I'll just wait here. You fellas go on ahead to the hospital. No, now we're all set now. Come on, Ben, back in the car. Yes, let's go. I hope this works. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, my hiccups have stopped. What'd you say, Abner? My hiccups have stopped. Yes, we will. <laughs> you know, this old car of yours runs pretty good, Ben. What kind is it? It's a uh, hot rod. <laughs> Uh-huh. Was made for me by a friend of mine in Mount Ida, Eustace Sprinkler. Has quite a mechanical mind. You must have. At seven years of age, Eustace took his mother's washing machine apart in nine minutes and 27 seconds flat. Granny, that's fast. Yes, sir. And it took his mother over three months to put it back together again. <laughs> well, I do know. That's interesting. Well, I've noticed the pickup old Betsy's got. Hey, Granny, she sure does go. Better take a look back there and see how Abner's coming. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Well, for goodness sakes, I never knowed Abner could jump like that. <laughs> Why, he's bounding a good ten foot in the air. Maybe we better stop and check his hiccups. Well, if he's as frisky as that, they can't be bothering him very much. For goodness sakes, Abner, watch where you're going. <laughs> you run right into the back end of the car. How are the old hiccups, Abner? Abner, Ben asked you a question. Don't just lay there answering. <laughs> oh, what, what'd you go, sir? Dad, blame fast for. Hey, Ben, it worked. He ain't got the hiccups no more. <laughs> Well, I got shut of them for if you start dragging me down the road. <laughs> I tried to stop you, hollered at you. Well, it don't matter now. You're cured. Come on, get in the car. We got to get to the hospital. And get that rope off your neck. Oh. That's a nice cure, isn't it, Abner? Yeah. Oh, it's dandy. <laughs> Pity's sakes, he's got him again. Well, drive on, Ben. There ain't nothing more we can do for him. Without killing him. (laughs) 
Mom, I think I think maybe I can scare the hiccups out of him. You see that telephone pole? I'll make believe I'm going to hit it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> hey, Ben, watch where you're driving. <laughs> Love. Love me all right? Yeah, I guess so. Granny, I, I thought you were just going to make believe you was going to hit that pole. Fine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at the car. It's a mess. Well, at least it cured Abner's hiccups. Yeah. Or wait, where is Abner? <laughs> Must be around here someplace. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Abner! Abner, are you alive? <laughs> well, here's the hospital. Ben, you get the car fixed and meet us back here. A highly good plan. Well, see you later. Yeah, come on, Abner. We'll go in and see old Charlie. Recollect now, hospitals has got a lot of rules, so just do what they tell you. Don't act country. I'll try not to. <laughs> and cut that out. Can't you see that sign? Quiet zone. I'm sorrowful. <laughs> Be quiet. Yes, could I help you? Why, uh, yes, Mom. We come here to... Excuse me. County Hospital, Miss Cooper. This is Dr. McNaughton. I want you to be on the lookout for a patient. Another doctor has referred to me. I can't tell you what he looks like because I haven't seen him myself. But he has a rare form of hiccups. <laughs> rare form of what? Hiccups. Spasmoneuroglotistomy. Looks like I'll have to operate. <laughs> Well, he's already here, Doctor. Oh, good. Get him ready for surgery right away. Right away, Doctor. Oh, nurse, Miss Collins is coming. Uh, what I started to say, ma'am... Yes, I, I know all about it. We're expecting you. Well... Here, you'll fill out this card, please. Who, me? <laughs> yes, name and address, bank balance, age, bank balance, next of kin. Ah. Oh. Don't forget the bank balance. <laughs> Go ahead, Abner, and fill it out. I, I told you about them rules. All right. <laughs> Nurse, as soon as he's through, take him up to room 321. Prepare him for a, pl uh, for a possible glottis tracheectomy. Oh, my. Yeah, how's old Charlie getting along, ma'am? I beg your pardon? Charlie Redfield, the patient that we... Oh, yes, Mr. Redfield. He's out of danger now. Uh, here's a card. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peabody. You and your friend follow this nurse. I'd love to. <laughs> and Mr. Peabody, good luck. Abner's in for a mess here, you know. December 5th, 1948, Love and Abner on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, more of this digitally restored edition of Lum and Abner, courtesy of Ted at RadioMemories.com. Uh, this episode from December 5th, 1948. Hey, here it is, room 321. Reckon how long Charlie's going to have to be in the hospital, Miss Nurse? I've no idea. Uh, Mr. Edwards, you'd better wait out here in the hall for a few minutes. Oh, just one can go in at a time, huh? Uh, yes. Come along, Mr. Peabody. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, howdy, Charlie, old boy. Uh, wait a minute. The bed's empty. Where's Charlie Redfield? Well, I think Mr. Redfield is down on the next floor. Well, I'd better get down there, then. Oh, no, no, no. You stay right here. But now... Now then, please take your clothes off. Ah. <laughs> uh. 
Come on now, hurry up. All right, doggies, man, I believe you scared the hiccups right out of me. <laughs> well, that's fine. But hurry up and undress and put on this gown. That little sawed-off nightshirt? <laughs> yes. All right, doggies, I ain't gonna do it. Come now, Mr. Peabody, don't be difficult. When you come to a hospital, you've got to follow the rules. Oh, them things. Lom told me about them, but I never had no ideas as anything like this. Now, please hurry and put on the gown. Well, I ain't gonna do it with you standing there. Of course not. I'll step out and get the cart. The cart? Well, certainly we have to wheel you into the... Well, into a different room. Oh, well, that's awful thoughty of you, but law me, I can walk. I'm sorry, but it's the rules. <laughs> Doggies such silly rules. <laughs> Them things are gonna kill me, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, can I go in now, nurse? Uh, not yet. Pardon me, I want to get that cart there. Oh, excuse me. Can I help you with it? No, thank you. I'll manage. Uh, tell Abner not to stay in there too long. Don't worry, he won't. All right, Mr. Peabody. Mr. Peabody, where are you? <laughs> For goodness sake, come out from under that bed. <laughs> All right, but you, you close your eyes now. I, I feel silly in this get up. <laughs> come on now, get up on the cart. Have you got your eyes closed? <laughs> yes, they're closed. Don't you pee. I won't. <laughs> Cross your heart. Oh, good grief, yes. All right, here I come, ready or not. <laughs> Blame it, I overshot. <laughs> well, here, I'll pick you up and put you back on the cart. Well, now, wait. There you are. Now, let's go. Oh, nurse, can I go in? Abner. <laughs> what in the name of thunder are you doing? <laughs> Howdy, Lom. <laughs> You wait here. I'm going to ring for the elevator. And, Mr. Edwards, if you have anything to say to Mr. Peabody, you'd better say it now. Abner, for pity's sakes, get off of that wagon and get your clothes on. <laughs> Lom, this is all part of them rules you was telling me about. Rules? You must have made a mistake of some kind. No, I never. And if you want to see Charlie, you'd better get in there and get a nightshirt on, too. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can catch the next wagon down at Charlie's room. <laughs> well, I'll be dead blamed. Hey, Aunt Lom, you better watch that nurse. She's kind of fresh. Oh? And strong, too. Hmm. Uh, don't you ever tell Elizabeth none of this. <laughs> I won't. I, I just go in this room, huh? Yeah, them's the rules. I don't see no nightshirt in here. Well, call downstairs and have them send one up. They got good room service here. All right. Miss Cooper speaking. Oh, say, ma'am, I wonder if you could rustle me up a nightshirt. I want to see Charlie. What did you say? Well, Mr. Peabody has got his on, and he's on his on the cart on his way to Charlie's room. Oh, you're so mistaken I... about that. Mr. Peabody's on his way to the operating room. Operating room? But he... But... It... Oh, my goodness. Abner! Abner, they're going up! Hey, Abner! Oh, my goodness, he's gone. Now, now, calm down, Mr. Edwards. But, Miss Cooper, you can't let them do this to Abner. This whole thing's a mistake. Dr. McNaughton never makes mistakes. But Dr. McNaughton ain't his doctor. I know that. His own doctor called McNaughton in on the case because he's a specialist. All you can do now is get in touch with Mr. Peabody's own physician, whoever he is. Yeah, but by the time I did oh, that... Oh, there you are, Lum. Huh? Oh, Ben. Well, finally got old Betsy patched up. Well, well, well. I sure am glad to see you, Dr. Withers. Yeah. How's that? Ain't this, ain't this a coincidence, Miss Cooper? <laughs> Here's Abner's own doctor. <laughs> well. <laughs> now can we go up and get Abner? Not so fast. I'm not convinced this man is a doctor. Well, you heard him say he just got done patching up Betsy. 
And she was in awful shape, wasn't she, Ben? Oh, my, yes. She had a terribly wrinkled turtle back. <laughs> was it a difficult operation? There was one of the worst wrecks I've ever seen. I thought I'd never get her chassis back in shape. <laughs> Finally, I had to take a sledgehammer to her. December 5th, 1948, Lum and Amner on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The conclusion up in a moment. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of Lum and Abner. December 5th, 1948, Abner going to surgery. Oh, oh. You did what, doctor? All she needs now is a little paint and some new seat covers and she can run with the rest of them. <laughs> Just where did you go to school, doctor? She means you, Ben. Oh, Oh, uh, Mount Ida Consolidated Grammar School. <laughs> Our colors were orange and off purple. <laughs> I mean, what medical school? Oh, he, he's been to all of them. Jim's Hopkins, John's Manville. <laughs> I suppose he's associated with the Mayo Brothers, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all three of them. Manny, Moe, and Jack. <laughs> Now, can we go up and get Abner? You most certainly cannot, and what's more, excuse me. County Hospital, Miss Cooper. Come on, Ben, now's our chance. Wait a minute, Edwards, you come back here. Come back here, I say. All right. That's all the x-rays we need to take. Hurry the pictures, nurse. Yes, doctor. And uh, you can relax now, Mr. Peabody. Yeah, say, Doc, if these pictures come out good, can I get a dozen of them to give for Christmas presents? <laughs> well, they'd certainly make novel gifts. You know, Doc, I don't want you to think I don't appreciate all this service I've been getting, wheeling me around and taking my picture and all, but just tell me one thing, Doc. Yes? When do I get to see Charlie? Here are the pictures, Doctor. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Oh, my goodness, is that me? I dog is I've lost weight since I've been. Well, I ain't nothing but skin and bone. And dad blame little skin. Well, I can't understand why Dr. Carter ever thought you had spasmoneuric glottistomy. You haven't got a single symptom. Hey, uh, Doc, could you have these pictures retouched a little? Now, Mr. Peabody, I want to go call Dr. Carter and report my findings to him. Oh, uh, there's a cot over there behind the screen. You lie down on that until I get back. Yeah, all right, but hurry now. Charlie be out of here forever. I'll get to see him. But there's a sheet there. You can throw that over you. Come along, nurse. Yes, doctor. I can't understand Carter sending this man to me. Outside of a peculiar-shaped head. <laughs> and a Charlie fixation. There's nothing wrong with him. Hey, hey, there's that nurse. Hey, nurse, nurse. Oh, hello, Mr. Edwards. I suppose you want to see Mr. Peabody. Yeah, yeah, could we? Well, will it be all right, doctor? They're close friends. Yes, it's all right. You'll find him in that room right there. Uh, thank you, ma'am. There's a sheet over him. Yeah, all right. <laughs> huh? Sheet over him? Ben. Ben, did you hear that? He was a good man. <laughs> Ben, I'll never forgive myself for this. Well, you tried. You did your best. I never ought to let him take him away in that cart. Don't you mean chariot? <laughs> well, come on. I'd like to go in and take one last look. Poor little varmint. <laughs> I wonder if he ever got to see Charlie. I don't dare to look, Ben. Can can you see him? No, I, I think they placed him behind that screen. I just can't believe he's gone. Seems I, like I might not hear his voice yet. Mom? <laughs> My grannies, I can hear it, Ben. I can hear it. 
Well, I ain't heard it, too. Have you fellas saw Charlie? <laughs> no, we ain't, Abner, old pal. Did you get to see him first? No, but they told me I soon will. <laughs> Charlie was a good man, too. <laughs> Say, Lom, I wish you'd find my clothes and take care of them for me. Don't worry, Abner, old friend. I'll take care of everything. I'll give them to Elizabeth. What for? They won't fit her. <laughs> Lom, ask him if he's run across Emery Zinkafoos. <laughs> Abner, are you still there? Why, sure. Well, listen, old boy, I just want you to know that if I had it all to do over again, I'd treat you a whole lot different. I'd never make you do all the sweeping and all the delivering and all the dirty work. I'd do a little of it myself. <laughs> you would? Yeah, I'd do most of it even if I could just have you back at the store again. Well, law me, law me, I'm coming back. Huh? Just as soon as I see Charlie. Why, <laughs> Abner, you're walking around... I thought you... Why, you little varmint. Huh? <laughs> Deliberate lay there and let me think you was to... I ought to whop you right well, on... Now, 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 you're getting all upset. Well, Mr. Peabody, I found out you're the wrong patient. But no one seems to know where the right one is. Well, he ain't in here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Do that again. Do what again? <laughs> By George, that's it. Spasmo neuro autistomy. <laughs> Nurse, get this fellow to surgery right away. At last, we've got the right man. Granny sure lucky my hiccup stopped when they did. Don't tell them what that doctor would have did to me. Yeah, them are awful things to have. You don't know how lucky you are, Ben. Slide. <laughs> Randall now speaking as the CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Wonder if Wendell Niles, the announcer, was the... Uh, patient they were looking for. December 5th, 1948, Lum and Abner on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. I want to remind you that all these great Lum and Abner shows you're hearing this hour are from Ted, RadioMemories.com. He supplies shows on cassette, CD, or flash drive for your computer, digitally encoded and restored for your dining and dancing pleasure. Now we'll step back to December 5th, 1944, as uh, Lum and Abner, and Abner, well, Abner's on a hunger strike, trying to get his wife to take him back. Uh, Granny, Abner, I believe that's our ring. Hi, Doggy Lum, I believe you're right. Well, hello, John, I'm down, store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Now, let's see what's going on in Pine Ridge. Lum's newest plan to reunite Elizabeth and Abner is to place Abner on a hunger strike until his wife gives in and asks him to return home. This is the second day of the hunger strike, and as we look in on the little community today, we find Lum having a fairly difficult time keeping Abner in line with this new plan. Listen. Hey, Abner, Abner, get away from that cracker barrel. Well, Lum... Hey, Abner, put that cracker back. Here, let me look in your hand. I ain't got nothing in there. Put that right back in there. Which hand? The other. Let's oh. see. Open it up. Huh? Open up them fingers. Oh, Lum, <laughs> no, don't do that. Oh, don't you might. All right, you've done broke no, that cracker all to pieces anyway. I can't. Well, dust it, it off on the floor there. Well, I'm hungry, Lum. Well, that's the way you're supposed to be. How many times do I have to remind you that you're on a hunger strike? I know I am, but I don't see how one little cracker is going to make no difference. Elizabeth won't never know it. She's the one I'm doing this for, not me. No, she won't know it. That's true, but it's the principle of the thing. One little tiny bite of a cracker and you've broke the hunger strike. Well, I believe that'd be a good thing to break. Now, listen, Abner. You've got a good start on this thing now, and you don't want to spoil it. Uh-huh. This is your second day, and I believe if you can hold out four or five more days... Four or five more? Yeah. 
Well, now, I think Elizabeth will change her mind and beg you to give this up and come back home. Well, if I have to go on starving for five more days, I won't be able to go home. Oh, you can stick it out if you just set your head to it. Mom, I'm hungry. Oh, ma'am, stop saying that. You just make it worse by concentrating on being hungry. Well, that's what I am, hungry. H-U-N-G-G-R-E-E, hungry. That's what I am. I ain't eat nothing for two days. I know you ain't, but try to get your mind on something other subject. Use the power of mind over matter. Well, I... Uh, uh, think of some other subject to talk about, like, oh, like trees and flowers, birds. Have you saw that bird Charlie Redfield bought the other day? I had, I'd have had it. It's a parrot. It's named Polly. Polly? Yeah. Well, um, I, I want a cracker. Abner, I've told you a thousand or a hundred times you can't have no crackers. Well, I'm hungry. Well, now, listen. If you keep munching on junk all the time, you ain't never going to get that starved look to you. Good for me. And then Elizabeth ain't never going to feel sorrowful for you. She won't, huh? Of course not. you got to have sunk cheekbones. You have to look holler-faced and gant. Hmm. I don't know about my face, but my stomach is sure holler. Just look at her. How much too big my pants are for me. Look at that. Good, all right, but it ain't good enough yet. you got to get to where you look terrible and feel terrible and everything else. Sort of faint. Brawny. Ain't there some other way you can go on a hungry strike without not eating? No, it's the only way you can do it. That's silly. I'll think up a new one here. Now, get your mind on something else, Abner. Think about the store business or something. Maybe you better get out and make the deliver. Make the deliver? Yeah, the fresh air will do you good. Help you work up a good appetite. No. I know that that's going too far. Here I am starving to death, and you want me to tote some great big old heavy groceries all over town. Oh, you ain't that weak. Not yet, anyway. You ain't got a whip you want to use on me, have you? Well, now, don't be sarcastic, Sadler. I ain't being mean to you. I'm just trying to help you get back to your happy home again. Well, you I... asked me to get you back in your house. I know it, Lon, but I can't tote them baskets of groceries. There just ain't no two ways about it. I'll fall right flat on my face. Well, that's good. Huh? Try to fall over near your place so Elizabeth can see you. Oh, man. That'll work on her sentence going up. So that I don't know why I ever let you talk me into this hungry strike in the first place. There ain't nothing about it that I like. Look how I'm shaking here, Long, just like a dog on a wet sack. Look at that. Wait, wasn't that our ring? You keep jabbering there, I can't hear nothing. Oh, no, I'm so hungry, I can't hear nothing either. Oh, there it goes again. Yeah, yeah, I see it, all right. Yeah. Might be Elizabeth right now, starting to get worried about you. She ain't half as worried about me as I am, I'll tell you. Hello, yeah, I'm down store in the library. Lum Eddard's talking. Starving to death. Oh, how are you, Essie? Farmer's coming over here, I'll bite you. Well, good. How's that? Oh, is that going to be Saturday night? Well, I'd like to, Essie, but I'm feared I'm just going to be too busy. Abner might do it, though. I might do what? Yeah, Mom? he'd be glad to serve on a committee. I know he would. Mom, I ain't got the strength to serve on nothing. Yeah, all right. That'll be fine, Esri. You bet you. Goodbye. What you got me into now, Mom? Oh, you'll enjoy this. The annual initiation of new members is being held over at the lodge hall Saturday night, and Esri wants you to serve on a committee. He does, huh? He's a grand high purple horned eagle this year. I know he is. Worked up from just a plain lavender eagle this month. I know, I know. But he ain't going to get me to starve on no committee Saturday night because I ain't going to live that long. Oh, you will, too. I wish they weren't sure having that initiation right now because it all has taken out the large treasury. They won't even have enough money left to buy me a wreath. Oh, silly. They won't. They could make a special assessment for that. Well, that'd be nice. But you ain't going to die, so just get that idea out of your head. The reason I suggested you for a committee was because I thought it'd give you something else to think about. Well, what committee am I going to be on? Uh, having the lodge robes clean? I'm generally on that committee. Oh, I don't know what it is. As you say, he'd let you know that later. Yeah, it better not be too much later. I'll never find out. I'll be laying there on the floor star to death. Right in the middle of a grocery store, too. That's going to hurt our business, Lon, me laying around here dead. You know? Admiral, will you stop talking that way? Well, it will. First thing you know, you're going to get yourself to think, wait a minute. There comes Cedric. You can talk to him. I ain't off of eating for a while. I ain't sure I want to get my mind oh, on Oh, what a halfway beauty day. Yeah, howdy, Cedric. Oh, pretty good. I'm all out of breath. I stool hopped all the way over here. Well, yeah. come on in. Uh, what, what you got in the box there, Cedric? Oh, just my lunch. Huh? 
Oh, it's just my lunch. Do you fellas mind if I eat my lunch here today? Why, no, no. Sit right down here, Cedric, old boy. <laughs> I might even join you. <laughs> what do you got? Abner, get out of that lunch box. Well, Lom, I, I was just sort of peeking in there. But you're on a hunger strike. How many times do I have to tell you that? Oh, Dad, blame that thing anyway. What, what did you say you was on, Mr. Abner? A hungry strike, Cedric. I ain't supposed to eat nothing till Elizabeth takes me back again. Or I starve to death, one. Well, bet you get awful hungry doing that. Get hungry? My stomach's flapping up again my backbone right now. I think I've cut my throat. Might not knocking my spinal vertigos right out of joint. Well, Cedric, how come you ain't eating your lunch over at the schoolhouse like the other scholars do? Well, I, I don't get hardly nothing to eat over there, that's reason. Leastways, not enough for a boy my size. Well, you take your own lunch, don't you? Yes, Mom, but me and my little chums over there got a sort of a system where we sort of trade things around, sort of. Trade things around? Yes, Mom. We, we trade a sandwich for an apple or a sweet potato for a boiled egg or something. Oh. Uh-huh. And every day when, when I get done trading around with my little chums, I, I don't have nothing left, hardly. You don't? No, Mom. I don't know how it happens, but that's the way it always works out. I reckon I'm just unlucky. Huh. Yeah, well, you better eat your lunch here then, Cedric. You starve to death over there. Yeah, that ain't a good thing to do, I'm finding out, too, Cedric. That's starving to death. You get hungry doing that. See what I got to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, for goodness sakes. I never knowed Mama put these pieces of fried chicken in here. Uh, did you say fried chicken, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Mama sure knows how to fix that stuff good, oh, too. Oh, just look at that grub. Just look at that, Mr. Hedden. Cedric, don't hold that up in front of me. You're going to draw back a nub there. I'll snap your arm off. Boy, sure tastes good. Mm. See, that's the best fried chicken I ever ate in my whole life, nigga. Cedric, will you please hash up? Yeah, kind of be careful what you say about eating around Abner, Cedric. Fact says you better not go back to... You better go on back over to the schoolhouse, Cedric. I believe it'd be safer for you to take a chance with your little chums and to stick around here. Well, this won't take me long. When, I, when I'm this hungry, I like to eat fast. Oh, you've been hoarding. That's what you're Here, Mr. Abner, will you hold a box for me while uh, I give you a sweet potato? Oh, sure. I'd love to No, get wait, a wait, a, wait a minute now. Give me that box. It ain't safe for you to hold it, Abner. Doggy, you better get Cedric out of here then, Lum. He's just torturing me to death. That's what he's doing. Yeah, I guess you're right. Cedric, you better go back to room and eat your little Abner can't see you. Eat room's a good place to eat anyway, Cedric. Yes, Mom. So is this the worst one day I ever spent in my whole life? Oh, oh, oh. You dropped a hard-boiled egg. Well, well, what yeah, you... I'll get it. I'll get it, Cedric. Abner, right. get your hands off of that egg. I'll pick it up. Oh, that blame it anyway. Yeah, you got to watch you every minute. Here you are, Cedric. Now get on back to the feed room there. This one. This way less hungry strikes over. I'll eat this whole town clean out of grub in one now, day. there you go again, I'll... Abner. That's all you think about. I told you it'd be a heap easier if you'd just get your mind on some other subject. Yeah, I reckon you're right. What else can I think about? Well, you might think about the international situation. Or... Wait a minute, there's our ring again. If that's a grocer order, it'll help you to get out and put that order up for him. Well, I hope they order a couple of boxes of crackers. That's what I'll Hello, anyway. John, I'm down store in the library. Oh, tree, he's right here. I've been the rest of my life. Here, Abner. Ezra, do you decide to work? Here, yeah. here, take her yeah. easy. Hello. Yeah, that's right, Abner. Head of what committees? Oh. Uh, What's the matter, Abner? You're turning pale. You know what committee I'm on, Lum? No. Food and refreshments. I've got to barbecue a hog and then make sandwiches out of it to serve to that bunch of fat glutens over there at the lodge hall. <laughs> December 5th, 1944, Lum and Abner here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. A reminder that our friend Ted at RadioMemories.com supplied us these shows today, and you can learn more about Classic Radio Collecting, not just by going to my webpage, ClassicRadio.stream, but you can see a lot of what Ted has available over at his webpage, which is RadioMemories.com, including a lot of shows that we just won't air here. So check them out, won't you please? RadioMemories.com. Ted supplies shows on cassette, on the CD, or on flash drive for your computer. So check it out 
and you will be surprised. The prices are reasonable, and uh, you get them delivered fast. Radiomemories.com. Also, a reminder to visit my webpage, ClassicRadio.Stream, where you can stream our shows on demand. I also have a list of places where our shows are available to download by a podcast, totally free. You can also stay in touch with us daily through our social media links. You can find those also at ClassicRadio.Stream, uh, our, our locations on the Book of Faces, and also on the Twitter machine. And you can also contact me there. But most importantly, if you'd like to buy me a coffee like Larry did, uh, you can uh, buy me a coffee there. And the buy me a coffee money does not buy me coffee because I don't drink coffee. In the mornings, I'll drink Dr. Pepper. In the evenings, I'll drink coconut water. Uh, But uh, no, what we do is uh, we use that money and set it aside for making, making sure we can get the best classic radio collections from collectors and bring them to you here and it also makes sure we can keep our distribution channels up and running that's at classicradio.stream thank this station please and support their advertisers and tell your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial classic radio theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station